Good afternoon. Thank you for attending this meeting. Before leaving the floor to my colleagues for their presentations, uh, I'll give a brief introduction to point out the rationale of the new courses available from the next academic year and how they frame in the study program and hence in your study plans. Well, our school, the School of uh, Industrial and Information Engineering is fostering the integration of traditional and innovative teaching methods. Actually, the classic approach based on ex cathedra lectures and exercise hours ensures deep knowledge and understanding through a rigorous method to complex problem solving. On the other hand, uh, innovative classes are expected to promote the so-called active learning which emphasizes autonomy, critical sense, and attitude oriented to practice and eventually an enhancement of soft skills. Laboratory and project courses enable mixing the two approaches to develop either a research oriented or a job oriented attitude. For this reason, in the next academic year, the teaching mix of several courses will be revised give more emphasis to laboratories of various kinds, mm -hmm. design, experimental or numerical, but the major novelty is the creation of a new group on free choice at the second year, including only laboratory courses. Here is depicted the study plan at Bovisa campus, but a similar structure is available for Piacenza campus as well. As you already know, Group S1 includes all the elective subjects, which are eight credit sized. And here we find a new entry, Digital Twin for Energy Systems Management, which will be presented today. On the other hand, the new group labs includes five new courses three or five credit sized uh, available in the second semester and characterized by a very large amount, as you can see, of hours dedicated to project numerical and experimental laboratories. To enable an active participation, uh, the number of students attending these courses uh, will be limited to a maximum of 20 students per subject, so overall 100 students, and hence a selection is needed. The selection will be based on a call, and uh, uh, the call will be held between September 1st and September 10th. Each candidate will submit two choices, a primary one and a secondary one. Then a committee will select the students based on the number of credit passed so far, date and time of submission, and the average score. Finally, the selected students will be asked to submit their study plan, including the assigned subject, and to add a soft skills course to complete mm -hmm. the eight credits required. Because remember that these laboratory courses are three or five credit sized, and in your study plan, you have a choice of eight credits. So you will have to combine soft skills and labs to enable a synergic action of these two kinds of subjects. So uh, I'm available at the end of the presentation to answer questions about these uh, administrative aspects and now I leave the floor to my colleagues starting from Professor Emanuela Colombo with the course Energy Planning Lab. Emanuela. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for the introduction Luigi and thank you for the opportunity to introduce to the students uh, some of, uh, uh, of the ideas that we have uh, already shared. Uh, I'm going to talk very, uh, very few and uh, uh, I mean, I uh, focus uh, the presentation on some very practical elements that may uh, give to the students some flavor of what we are going to, uh, to of what we will be discussing. So uh, the energy planning labs uh, aims at, uh, uh, let's say, introducing uh, to the students the energy planning fundamentals. 
uh, which means uh, maintain, which means substantially uh, a tool uh, and instruments that can be uh, supportive in terms of the energy transition. Among the many techniques and tools that we can talk about, we will definitely focus our attention on the state of the art open source modeling tool. The scale, the, let me say the focus of the energy planning lab uh, will stay at the national or regional level, which means that, I mean, we will discuss mostly about the energy system of a country or the energy system of a region like uh, the European Union, for instance. And we have three main goals, let's say, in this course. Uh, the first one is to transfer uh, the right fundamental knowledge and understanding about what is energy planning. And the, in the next slide, we will see uh, something more. Let me close this. Okay. Uh, then, uh, after understanding and, and, and deepening this aspect, uh, we will try to apply together with the student the knowledge and the understanding of these two uh, energy modeling tool by using, as I was saying, open source codes. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, we always try to uh, give the, the students the opportunity to make their own judgments by means of guided case studies, which means that after understanding what we are talking about, how this can be used, uh, making example together uh, along with the tutorials, then the students will be placed in the condition to develop alone a kind of uh, simplified country energy uh, study. Uh, during, during the lectures, a participatory approach is more than envisaged, let me say, because it will be a very practical uh, course in which the students are really requested to be uh, proactive as much as they can. So for that reason, uh, we will have a lot of tutorials and, uh, and then some session in this course. You can see a little, more, a little more about the activities and the outline of the activities which try to follow these three uh, main uh, goals, as we have already said. So in the first part, uh, along with the energy planning, we will uh, try to discuss with the students the relevance of the national energy accounting um, and how they can be, uh, let's say, preliminary uh, fundamental knowledge for then being introduced to the energy modeling and the optimization technique. Uh, then uh, by um, using a homemade, let me say, Excel-based uh, teaching models, uh, we will try to let the student understand how the en energy balance equation are treated within energy modeling tools. And this is very important. Uh, and this is what uh, uh, transforms uh, a, a, a student in, in an analyst un, 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 unless being uh, a poor user of uh, uh, specific tools. Then in the second part, uh, we will deepen uh, a little bit of the taxonomy of the many energy modeling tools. And the taxonomy is relevant because uh, by scrolling a number of uh, characteristics of different energy modeling tools, the students will be able to understand for which different uh, uh, objective I have to use or I can use a different set of tools. Then we will deepen two uh, of them, which are um, Calliope and Osmosis. They are different tools. We will uh, explain uh, about them and we will, have, uh, we will prepare some guided tutorials so that the students will be able at the end of the course to master both of them. Both of them. Then in the third part, once the students uh, are fully acquainted of uh, how the, uh, let's say, the balancing equation are managed in a, in a in a modeling uh, tool software and how two examples are, uh, are made, then the student will be assigned with a simplified country uh, study. It will be simplified by definition because uh, the course is, uh, is quite short, so we cannot uh, deepen it that much, but we can uh, start with a very interesting uh, analysis, which will allow the students to understand the national energy accounting of a, of a country. It can be Italy, it can be uh, Kenya it can be I don't know, Argentina or any different country. And then uh, we will try to ask the student to uh, use uh, one of the uh, software, one of the uh, open uh, code uh, source that uh, open code uh, software that we have uh, introduced uh, in order to make their own analysis for long term planning or for uh, uh, analyzing the, let's say, the current dispatching and the operation of the system. Uh, we don't know yet, uh, we still have to think a little bit uh, between uh, making a kind of individual uh, st case study order to ask the students to work in team, 
there are pro and cons in each of the of the of the situation but we will discuss this uh, maybe with the, also with the students to understand uh, how much they prefer to work uh, uh, in a standalone way or that in teams i'm always a little bit more in favor of teams group um, this is also the, these three elements also um, let uh, the student understand where the majority of the effort in the course is made. And as you can see here in this slide, uh, we have uh, the majority, I mean, 50% of the, of the course is dedicated to guided tutorials. So you will be assisted uh, by trying to do some uh, hands on guided exercise uh, with, the, with the open software that we have mentioned. Um, a few part is dedicated to, to the theory, but as I said, it's very, it's very limited in these uh, peculiar uh, courses. And then 30% uh, of the course is dedicated to, let's say, the development of your own case study. So the majority, uh, more than 80% of this course is uh, hands on. Uh, this means that it, it, it will be very practical. Um, just to make some uh, small example, and then I'm going to, to the conclusion. Um, we have uh, um, used, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there is a delay. The network in Leonardo campus is not working <laughs> as expected. Uh, we have used uh, um, this kind of uh, opening um, source code and uh, let's say energy modeling tools to make different kind of analysis. Just to mention a few, uh, we have used them for a sectorial integration in Italy by trying to combine uh, the requirement from uh, the power perspective, the electricity uh, demand with the, the demand of it, which is uh, another very important career. We have used this tool uh, in order to analyze uh, uh, what can happen if we study long-term planning for a country like Kenya and uh, what happens if we uh, analyze, uh, uh, let's say, at a very disaggregated scale uh, the situation of the, of the country, which means uh, to divide it into uh, different nodes and have the demand and the generation in these different nodes. Obviously, when you have such a, a, a a, a big variation into the availability of resources, it become very much important for this kind of tool being able to be disaggregated at, at the country level. Other, we have used this uh, uh, kind of tool in combination with uh, uh, GIS uh, uh, technologies in order to find uh, the best uh, uh, optimal solution for uh, rural electrification. And this was one case in uh, Bolivia. Um, this is just to give you, let me say, a very general flavor of, of everything. Uh, last slide, I want to say something about the competences that are uh, behind the capacity of using this tool. Are they requested by the job market or by the research job market? Yes, they are, because uh, as you can uh, imagine nowadays, with all the attention to uh, the integration of technologies, uh, which uh, need to be used for providing services to the people and in order to achieve a certain level of sustainable development, different players, the academia, first of all, but also different players at the, the international organization level or public institution have just placed some, some logos here, are interested in understanding the scenarios uh, that are necessary for the, or the pathways, the technological pathways that can be designed for the energy transition and beyond. And the same is for uh, different private players or uh, non-governmental organization, which means civil society uh, operators that are very much interested in understanding the effect of some specific development technology like mini grid in, uh, in, uh, in, in rural Africa rather than hydrogen technologies, which is something that will be discussed later on by my colleagues. Uh, so this is just to say that uh, uh, there are competences. I mean, the, the course is mostly focused on, on the competence that we want to transfer to the students in order to enrich your curriculum. And I think I'm done. The next presentation is by Professor Lee. The course is Battery Materials Fabrication and Testing. So, um, uh, so I'm going to introduce the course, which is uh, called Materials Fabrication preparation and uh, characterization for this battery. So this is a, a course is mainly on the materials that see focus on materials for which can be applied for this battery. So the uh, plan of the course, or let's say the main result of the course is to give the knowledge to the student about uh, uh, what is lithium battery, why it's considered as the most promising um, 
candidate for the uh, ionic storage devices, for the, for example, like vehicle, and uh, especially is how the materials uh, used in the lithium battery is prepared. Since the active materials in the lithium battery is mainly ceramic type of materials, so this course will be also focused on uh, how to prepare the ceramic materials, which can be used in lithium battery. And at the same time, uh, how we are going to evaluate these materials and uh, by which kind of technique, which kind of method is also going to be introduced in the course. And uh, the plan is to uh, have 30 hours of teaching for this course. And uh, the lecture will be about eight hours, and uh, uh, the live experiment uh, part will be about 18 hours. And uh, we are going to have about four hours, maybe a little bit more than we can uh, take some hours from the lecture for the uh, uh, computer work, mainly on how to analyze different data. Uh, in the lecture part, uh, my plan is to uh, give some introduction on the lithium battery, especially when we design the active materials for lithium battery, what is the most important thing we should consider and what is the uh, uh, most principle uh, we should follow to get uh, the uh, uh, materials which has a high capacity, high uh, energy density, let's see the best performance. And then the uh, uh, second step is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, since all the materials are basically ceramic type of materials, uh, I would also uh, like to introduce different type of synthesis method, especially for ceramic, including, let's say, solid state reaction, the cooperation, this kind of type of method, especially those which has the chance to be uh, large scaled um, and used in the industry uh, battery per, uh, produced line. And then the uh, third part, uh, I want to introduce the, some characteristic method, especially the basic one. Let's see, when you work on the uh, materials for lithium battery, you, uh, you all need to aware about them, including the structure analysis and uh, how, to, uh, how to deal with the different component, how we are going to characterize and get to know the component of the materials you get. And the most important also, the electrochemical performances. And then the, the last part is uh, I want to introduce to the student the different type of lithium and battery uh, for the different application. Let's see that the type we're going to use in the car, use in the cell phone, and so on. And how to make the different type of uh, the uh, uh, different type of the lithium battery, and also uh, to follow this type of uh, battery, how we are going to make different type of electrode. So this is all the lecture part. And then for the experimental part, which is the main uh, part of this course, um, I first would like to have a student to choose which materials they want to work on after I give the introduction of all the different materials for lithium battery. Uh, but prim uh, principle, the uh, project two is uh, NCM111 uh, and the spin the LNMO, uh, LNMO type of materials because both of them are commercialized. And I think students can also get more information from the medium and uh, uh, literature, even newspaper about this type of material. So it could be more interesting for them. And then the, uh, after we, we prepare this type of materials, the second step, we are going to make the electrode out, out of this type of materials and then assembling the cone cell uh, in our lab and then the, uh, cycle them or let's see, test the electrochemical behavior of them with different uh, electrochemical method. And then the last part, uh, which is mainly with the computer, we are going to analyze data and uh, I'm going to let a student know which mainly uh, parameter or uh, property the material should have. And it can be considered as the good materials, and maybe have the possibility to be commercialized. So the program, uh, I, had, I made a plan with a different teaching hour. So the gray one is marked as the lecture. Uh, I will introduce the lithium battery and the principle of design FT materials, which I already mentioned, and then different synthesis method. And then in between, if possible, I would like to separate the le uh, uh, lecture part in two parts because the uh, after giving the uh, the first part of introduction, the student can start the lab work for the material synthesis or materials preparation. And then it's going to take the, about uh, 
uh, about let's say four, 12 to 14 hours to make the materials ready. And then we back to the lecture, uh, we can get knowledge about uh, char char characterization method and also the pr uh, process to prepare the electrode. And after that, uh, we come to the lab and we start to make the electrode and also make the cell and put on the cycle to cycle them. So at the end, uh, they will learn to analyze this data and uh, get to know the all, let's see, have the overall knowledge of what they get and um, uh, to have the idea of what is the best materials and how to choose the good active materials for this battery. So uh, basically, this is the plan of the course. Yeah. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Professor Lee. And then we can move to the next course, uh, the presentation by Professor Payar, and the course is Electrochemical Energy Storage Device. Good afternoon. So I'm a new associate professor here together with Professor Lee and uh, Professor Bozzini. We have a new lab which is dedicated to um, uh, lithium-ion battery materials, uh, zinc uh, battery, etc. So my class is complementary to the one that Professor Lee uh, just presented. So it is called electrochemical energy storage devices, and it also strongly focused on lithium-ion batteries. So the idea of uh, this class is not to focus on making materials, as the cl the class of uh, Professor Lee, but more to how to make uh, composite electrodes and prepare a coin cell battery. Also, how to set up electrochemical tests. And most importantly, uh, the idea for the final report is to understand the parameters, such as the different materials that we will use, which will be commercial in this case, uh, which means insertion materials, but also electrolytes. And very important for lithium ion battery, the interfaces they form because it is very crucial for the uh, capacity of the battery and the aging of the battery. And also trying to understand uh, the electrode and the cell design, how it influences um, the performance, such as the energy density, power density. And then we will also use different cycling conditions and different type of cells, and we'll see how uh, all that affects the battery performance. The mix between uh, lessons, experimental and computational are slightly modified uh, compared to the uh, announcements. So lessons is 10%. Uh, I will show that later. Experimental, I think I increase a little bit to 70% instead of 60%. And computational, I decrease a little bit uh, because at the end, there will be a report where a lot of data analysis can be done uh, at home. Uh, so, uh, the first part will consist on lecture on battery and testing of batteries. So, first, I will quickly present lithium ion concepts, which means anodes, uh, the interface and interfaces, the electrolyte, the separator, or the solid electrolytes, and the cathode. I will focus then more on the technology. Uh, how to make uh, electrodes, what are composite electrodes? how we can design a battery, uh, find the right uh, surface area for the battery and the surface uh, loading of active materials to reach either high energy or high density. Also different aspects of the battery that are the current collector, the packaging, also the things that are less conceptual but very useful such as the electrolyte additives and very importantly the aging mechanism that depends on all the above. So then we will test different battery materials. Uh, I, I mean, sorry, I will explain how we test battery materials and how we, uh, how we can use half cells or full cells uh, to test uh, battery materials and design. Uh, so that to have an equivalence between lab uh, scale and industrial scale. Uh, then uh, there will be the core of the class that will be laboratory classes where we'll do quite a bit of electrode preparation. On the one hand, we will work on water-based slurry, uh, which are more ecologically friendly, but mostly uh, reserved for anodes. 
And then uh, we will prepare also organic based slurries uh, with the PVDF uh, binder, which, are the which is the state of the art for cathodes. We also prepare maybe one cathode with the water based slurries, and we will see uh, the inconvenience to use uh, more uh, environmentally friendly uh, process. Then we'll prepare a lot of half cells, which means on one side a lithium metal electrodes, and on the other side, a cathode or a nanode to test the property of the electrode itself. And we will also do full cells, which means full lithium ion assembly and uh, testing uh, all that in coin cells. Then the data analysis will focus on the different materials and electrode thickness and uh, electrolyte and electrolyte additive and separator we'll use to make all these batteries. And the idea is to understand the effects of uh, the materials, the electrode and cell design, and the cycling condition on uh, the properties such as the high power or fast charge capability of the battery, the energy density, and the aging of the battery. So uh, I use the same uh, template as Professor Lee. Uh, we'll have one hour of a more general introduction of the concept before focusing more on uh, design and manufacturing and presenting uh, the battery uh, testing aspect for uh, research. Uh, then uh, electrode slurry, it will take a uh, little bit of time. Uh, same for electrode via organic slurries and then half cells assembly and testing will also take uh, eight to nine hours each, uh, both for half cells and full cells. Finally, uh, we will do some data analysis uh, to understand how the, the battery uh, performance can be seen in terms of equivalent series resistance or equivalent diffusion coefficients, because we cannot always determine the diffusion coefficient in each part of the battery, uh, but we can see a strong evolution in terms of lithium transport in the, in the battery uh, with the aging of the battery, for instance. And uh, that will be it. Uh, if you have any question, uh, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Paya. So we have question time at the end of the presentations. And now we can do to Professor Colbertaldo, who will give a presentation about the Hydron Technology Lab. Um, so yeah, the, I think that's the, the last of the laboratories that's been presented today. Uh, and the title is Hydrogen Technologies. Uh, I'm working on hydrogen technologies at, uh, across the entire value chain. And that's also the, the goal of this, uh, of this laboratory course. Uh, starting from the context, I mean, if uh, anybody has uh, read anything about the uh, recovery plants and the decarbonization, uh, you cannot have missed that uh, there's a lot of hype about hydrogen uh, being presented as uh, one of the key carbon-free energy vector for the future for different uses uh, as a pure element or blended or as a carrier uh, or as a conversion step within uh, the carbonized uh, fuels. So uh, it's the most abundant element in the universe as an atom, but uh, it is not available in pure form in the earth. So the value chain starts from the issue in uh, producing hydrogen uh, based on renewables. Then there are issues uh, and uh, technologies that are involved with the handling. And in the end, uh, we must put attention on uh, the new uses uh, or the differences in using hydrogen instead of other uh, fuels or energy vectors. As all the courses that have been presented today, uh, it will combine uh, lectures and uh, laboratory experimental activities. Uh, with the idea of improving the understanding of the elements by not just uh, listening and uh, seeing to them, but directly uh, hands-on acting on them. Uh, the actual precise uh, devices will be uh, also uh, defined by the research activities that will be going on in the Laboratory of Energy Conversion and Storage at the Department of Energy. So uh, the students will be able to interact with the ongoing uh, tests and activities. Uh, among them, uh, there will be electrolyzers uh, for production of hydrogen, hydrogen storage, uh, and the use of hydrogen in hydroelectrochemical devices or combustion-based devices. 
again, uh, the context is also the main uh, the main reading point for the topics. So we will try to have an overview on the supply chain, and we will um, dig into the different technologies involved. In the in the graph, you have just uh, uh, an overview of the possible supply chain elements: uh, production, conditioning, transport, storage, and demand. So the final use of uh, of the hydrogen, and we will uh, uh, go through all these elements as uh, it has been uh, uh, clearly stated since the beginning of today's uh, uh, meeting. Uh, the theoretical part, so the pure uh, uh, lecture, uh, traditional uh, uh, one to many approach, will be uh, limited to about 10% of the course, which will be uh, the starting point to provide the introduction and the main characteristics of the technologies. In particular, we will focus on uh, renewable hydrogen production, so a lot of uh, the um, electrochemical elements involved with uh, uh, electrolysis. Then uh, the main part of the course will be devoted to uh, numerical and experimental activities, so there will be the possibility to uh, hand on working with uh, the uh, active uh, research activities in the laboratory, uh, by helping and uh, doing some work into the uh, setup, control, and measurement. And uh, uh, this measurement, uh, this data collection will be the basis uh, for a project. So, as you can see and as you can guess, uh, there is a, a very participatory approach in the class. And uh, it's you can see a range of the share uh, between the different activities because it's uh, uh, rather difficult to clearly separate where the experimental part stops and the project starts because uh, uh, they're going to be uh, one leading to the other. And it is that uh, the project will be uh, a group project, so you can uh, interact with the different students and the not excessively large class uh, will also be a very, an added point uh, for, this, for this development. In a group project, you will be asked to uh, define the problem and the configuration for uh, the test uh, to collect the data and to process the data in order to provide uh, an assessment of uh, the pro of the process, which could be any of the steps involved uh, with the value chain, which have been shown. Very briefly, the learning outcomes uh, will be uh, the knowledge of the of the value chain of the hydrogen with all the criticalities, the pros and the cons of all uh, the steps, uh, the actual advantage in CO2 and uh, in, um, in overall uh, impact on the environment, the different potentiality for the use as an energy vector, and of course the possibility to uh, directly have an experience in the laboratory and with the data uh, analysis. Uh, I also listed some of the prerequisites, which uh, uh, I believe uh, won't be an issue for any of you since they are, most of them are covered by the Bachelor of Science in Energy Engineering or in most engineering uh, classes. And also um, quite a few attention on the energy system aspect. So both the basic energy system and advanced energy system courses are uh, are favored to be uh, a base for the students who will enroll in this course. That's all from my side. Thank you, Professor Colbertando. Thank you. And uh, let's move. You were you were wrong when you said that this was the last laboratory because we have a last one, which is the laboratory of photovoltaic-based systems. And now uh, I. I leave the floor to Professor Ogliari. I'm Emanuele Ogliari and I will introduce you now the photovoltaic based electrical system course. And the aim of the course is to provide the basis for the design and analysis, both from the theoretical point of view and experimental point of view of photovoltaic based systems from an electrical energy point of view. I'm an electrical engineer, so uh, I will emphasize the electrical side of, uh, the, uh, of the course. As previously mentioned, uh, blended learning and flipped classroom will be adopted, uh, and uh, in order to improve the capability of elaboration of experimental data 
autonomously. Um, here is the link of the Solar Tech Lab because uh, part uh, of the course will be led here and uh, uh, part of the activities uh, will be led here uh, in uh, Solar Tech Lab. Uh, nearly 20% uh, of, uh, of the course uh, is, uh, um, is a, a quick introduction for those topics and subjects. I assume that uh, students have already faced uh, along uh, the years uh, in, uh, in uh, energy department. And uh, uh, for instance, I will introduce some uh, of the main solar parameters, uh, and then I will move to the equivalent electrical model of uh, photovoltaic module, IV characteristic curves and temperature, irradiation independence, uh, and the shading effects, which is uh, so harmful for photovoltaics. Then I will move uh, to the electrical main components and their possible layouts, uh, and uh, I will provide the, the sizing criteria for the photovoltaic system. Uh, then I will um, emphasize the storage batteries uh, uh, side, uh, analyzing different existing technologies, uh, providing you the pros and cons, uh, sizing criteria, and then uh, in the last part uh, of, uh, of the lectures, I will give you the uh, calculations uh, and uh, the performance assessment criteria for the uh, assessment of the photovoltaic uh, systems uh, and also uh, the means for uh, the power estimations by means of uh, physical, uh, stochastic, artificial neural networks and hybrid uh, models. Then uh, a part of the course, uh, nearly again 20% of the course, will be uh, faced uh, in IT labs, both with MATLAB or Python. You uh, are asked to uh, accomplish some tasks uh, and also by means of PVC, another software which is uh, widely used. Uh, for the uh, sizing and design of the preliminary design of photovoltaics, uh, sorry, of um, photovoltaic systems, uh, you will be asked to simulate the voltage uh, drops uh, and calculate, calculate the, the performances uh, among these components. Then the main part of the course uh, is a project lab. Uh, uh, the four students uh, divided into groups uh, will carry on some projects dealing with PV systems, uh, having available component data sheets and design constraints. And this is the picture of uh, the solar tech lab, which is on the rooftop of uh, the uh, Department of Energy and uh, in the experimental lab. Uh, uh, here is the list, a short list of uh, some of the experimental activities uh, which will be carried on and supervised uh, in the lab. So, um, starting from the module, uh, photovoltaic module IV characteristic curve tracing, uh, both under shading, partial shading conditions or full, full uh, uh, enlightenment uh, conditions, uh, spot measurements on PV system and calculations of the performances, uh, for instance, the daily performance ratio uh, calculations, and then uh, other, other uh, activities, for instance, uh, the photovoltaic module power forecast uh, by means of the previous uh, techniques I have listed, and then the characterization of the thermal photovoltaics as a function of operating temperature. Um, so the uh, prerequisites are here listed uh, and uh, principle of electrical systems uh, for the electrical components uh, and uh, thermodynamics uh, and heat transfer, calculus and geometry. So your questions are more than welcome and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Emanuele. And uh, uh, last but not least, as it is common to say, Professor Claudius Barfati will introduce the course of Digital Twin for Energy Systems Management. Uh, recall that this course, uh, uh, this course uh, uh, is uh, uh, belonging to Group S1. So it is on free choice with no limitation to uh, attendance by the students. So, Claudio, we can see your presentation. 
Okay, thank you very much. And we can hear you, you, so you can start. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, so let's start. Uh, uh, my name is Claudius Gorfatti, and I come from the uh, mechanical engineering department. And um, I propose uh, this uh, new course for the next year, specifically the second semester of the next year, with the title uh, Digital Twin for Energy System Management. So before uh, entering into the detail of the course, uh, just a brief introduction of the context. Uh, so you might have uh, heard uh, in media that nowadays operating uh, uh, high value system uh, is critical, both from the point of view of costs, costs but also safety nowadays, uh, as always actually. And uh, uh, people are trying to come out with uh, new design approaches uh, and try to adapt the maintenance approaches in order to come out uh, with a safer uh, methodology, uh, with a safer approach, uh, but uh, still uh, saving costs. And in this framework, in this context, uh, there is a keyword that is uh, monitoring. And uh, this monitoring keyword uh, is uh, actually in order to improve safety, but without paying too much in terms of costs. Okay, so there are many, there is a lot of research, a lot of activities concerning monitoring. And one big problem in monitoring is that uh, uh, it's not easy to interpret data that are coming from sensors. Okay, so this is uh, the big issue. And one answer to this issue is the continuous uh, development of uh, digital twins that you can imagine a digital twin to be a replica of uh, your system, uh, a particular replica which consists in a combination of different kinds of models that uh, are able to retrofit some action to your system. Okay, imagine that uh, you acquire some sensor with uh, the observation uh, from the sensor, you update your model, and then you use this model in a loop uh, for controlling your system, okay? And then when we open this box, uh, we can speak for thousands of years. Anyway, uh, the final task uh, can, be uh, can be summarized with these three keywords. One is optimization. So we can use the digital twin for optimizing uh, the design for monitoring, so for instance, to generate some example data, simulated data that we can use during the operation of the system in order to interpret what the sensor is saying. And then finally, which is the highest level for decision making. So we can actually uh, model the entire operative scenario in order to predict uh, cost, risks, benefit of uh, a certain decision, okay? So that at the end of the day, based on what our model says, we can decide which path to follow, okay? For the operation of our system. So with this in mind, the goal of the course is first to provide uh, some methods and tools for the creation of a digital twin, uh, which is multidisciplinary and multiphysics. And uh, second, uh, a big keyword here is uh, applying. So uh, most of the course uh, is devoted to the application, okay, of methodologies. You will see 70% of the course is with laboratories and practice. So application of different modeling strategies in the framework of energy system. Examples of application, uh, modeling of the thermodynamic cycle for power generation, models for battery system management, uh, modeling for some mechanical subcomponents because also the energy system contains uh, uh, some mechanical parts that can have degradation and models for plant operation management. Okay, this is just an idea. A big keyword, final keyword, and then I will not bring any keyword anymore, is damage, okay? So the idea is, uh, can we predict uh, uh, how a potential failure or a potential deterioration mechanism on our system will influence the variable that we are observing, okay? We are observing strain, we are observing pressure, we are observing whatever you want with the sensor. Can we model 
how a degradation can affect the monitored variable. Okay, so that's what we want to do in our course. And at the end of the day, the activities uh, are uh, divided in these four steps. So, first of all, there will be some uh, modules in which we understand the scenario, what we call operation uh, evaluation. Okay, so uh, we are going to speak a little bit about design and maintenance approaches and typical uh, degradation mechanisms with potentially some models. Then we will learn how to model some interesting aspects, and this is a nice part of the uh, course, uh, which, co which includes both time-based and even-based modeling. We are going to use MATLAB a lot, both MATLAB Simulink, uh, so we are going to model uh, with multi-body uh, methods, okay, we are going to model the uh, energy systems, actually and also electrical systems for some specific applications, and then also even based simulation in order to uh, evaluate what's going on at predefined steps and during the life of our system, okay? And again, we are going to use MATLAB C events and MATLAB state flow for that. Then, actually, we need our digital tree to be fast if you want to use it during operation. So, we are going to learn how to do surrogate modeling with machine learning methods like artificial neural network and Gaussian processes, just as examples. And then the digital twin should be self-adaptive in order to adapt to what's going on in your structure. So we are going to use some Monte Carlo sampling techniques in order to perform model updating and prediction. Okay, so these are the topics that we are going to cover during the course. Then what you need I mean, a little bit of basics of MATLAB, okay, because we are going to use a lot of MATLAB here. So, at least working principle and basic scripting is appreciated. And also some basic knowledge, knowledge of statistics and data analysis, okay. However, if you are a bit short for that, we can provide some material in order to fill the gap. Uh, as I told you, as anticipated before, uh, I... Mm, forecast, <laughs> I predict we, we can uh, uh, have this mixture with 70% of practice and laboratories and 30% uh, of lectures. And uh, the final examination uh, will be a written examination, uh, very easy, <laughs> uh, with uh, an oral discussion. And this oral discussion is on the project that we develop uh, during the laboratories, okay? So, just an, an example of what we can do, suppose you have a, a ranking cycle for power plant, for a power generation, we have the boiler, the turbine, the condenser, the pump, okay, that's the easiest uh, cycle that we can have. And this is its version that we built in MATLAB with MATLAB Simscape. It's, uh, you can, it's look, it looks like a PNDI, okay, but it's more than a PNDI. We have uh, basically physical equations inside each one of these blocks. For instance, this is the boiler, this is the condenser, and inside the boiler and the condenser, we'll have additional blocks that describes what's going on uh, from the physical point of view in there. And Suppose that you also want to model the usage of uh, your uh, power plant. Uh, we have also the control to be taken into account. So we can use a valve and a pump in order to control the operation of this system in order to follow the demand. Okay. So uh, while this uh, uh, system, uh, by, while there is a different demand, we can control the system and have a change and have a complete monitoring of what's going on in the ranking cycle. Although uh, this is not the ranking cycle connected with this, uh, just for uh, information as I, as I am in the uh, uh, energy department, maybe someone can uh, see something strange. So, final question is, uh, how can we insert the damage, okay? So, suppose that uh, we consider the fooling in a condenser, okay? How this damage will affect uh, the sensor that we have in our power plant, okay? So, suppose that we model some, uh, uh, let's say, damage, uh, we change some parameters here in the condenser, and if we have some sensor all over these cycles, 
how this sensor will reflect the damage that we have in our system and how can we identify a monitoring strategy if we have competing damages, competing deteriorations in our uh, system that we are operating. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for your attention and that if you have any question, just feel free to ask later. I do hope that you enjoy the efforts of the study program in uh, introducing these new courses, which in my opinion are beautiful. But I would like also a feedback from you because I would like to enhance laboratory activities in our study program and to activate some new courses also in next academic year, so 22, 23. All right, there's a question. Marco asked, would you repeat what do we have to do to apply for the course? Yes, there will be a call, so you will receive an email from the dean's office, that is Presidenza, and uh, uh, such an email uh, will be sent uh, before the call, just before, immediately before the call. The call will be open from September the 1st to September 10th. This is the idea of the dean's office, of course. You will receive the, the email just before uh, uh, opening the call with all the instructions. And basically, you will have to uh, apply uh, and select two courses. One, which is your priority, and the second one that uh, uh, can be assigned if your priority uh, is already booked. Uh, then uh, the committee will select according to your curriculum uh, the uh, uh, the committee will select uh, uh, the, the, the people and associate them uh, to, to the various core courses. And finally, uh, you will be uh, asked to uh, fill uh, the study plan with uh, uh, the courses that has been associated to you. And of course, since the laboratory courses are five or three credits, then you will have to complete the selection of eight credits uh, using the soft skills group. And there you're free to choose uh, the, the, the soft skill course if you like without, without a call. Uh, so, uh, 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 yes, there's a... Uh, uh, Alice uh, saying that uh, a course in Liap Piacenza. Yes, the point is that in Bovisa we have 300 students, in Piacenza we have 30 students, so uh, the capacity of Liap Laboratory should be enough to host the students uh, uh, in Piacenza campus. Nonetheless, uh, the students in Piacenza campus uh, can choose uh, a course uh, a laboratory course uh, in, in, in Milan. Uh, if the number of students in Piacenza campus uh, uh, increases, so we will be able to uh, uh, enlarge the offer also in the Piacenza campus. Uh, uh, we have no courses available for the first semester because these laboratory courses involve, uh, uh, as you can see, a lot uh, of uh, uh, competencies uh, and uh, they are expected to take, to take place at the end of your academic career. Also because uh, they introduce you in most cases in research laboratories where you might also develop uh, a thesis. So as the last step, of your academic career, they uh, have been planned uh, in, in the second semester. Uh, then, can these courses be taken as excess courses and will they be included? No, uh, this is not possible. The, 
uh, you cannot take them as excess courses because uh, uh, of uh, the limited attendance. You can take, of course, uh, uh, digital twin for energy systems management as access. Such a course uh, uh, is the only one that can be included uh, in the SMART uh, uh, infrastructure program. Uh, but the ambassador in green technology program is a different, uh, is a different one. So uh, uh, it has dedicated uh, uh, subjects uh, and new courses that are specifically dedicated to such to such a program. You can only be in one laboratory course. Uh, yes, you can only be in one laboratory course because uh, 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 you know that to activate these courses. Uh, we need human resources, that is professors and researchers, and uh, available laboratories. Being most of these activities, uh, experimental activities, uh, we had to limit uh, the number of students. So my idea is to progressively increase the number of laboratories and hence uh, attendance in order to enable each student of energy engineering to uh, enroll a laboratory course. But uh, uh, for the academic year 21-22, our resources only enabled 100 students. So I would like to enable the largest possible number of students to attend the laboratory. Uh, the recording will be uploaded uh, in uh, uh, the uh, website, to the website uh, uh, of the study program, and I will send you to the beep channel the link to the recording. Uh, and now uh, there's a, a question, uh, a great initiative, thank you. My query is that since I started my course in 2019 and I'm done with group S1 and soft skill, so these courses are not for someone as me. Yes, unfortunately, since you just, uh, you've already chosen from group S1 or soft skills, uh, you can't access uh, uh, these, uh, these courses. Uh, we have a feedback. It's great to promote practical and experimental knowledge in the master program. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I would like to emphasize uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, specially dedicated laboratory courses, so this is the novelty, but all my colleagues uh, uh, made an effort to increase practical classes, laboratories, uh, uh, team group and so on, uh, and all these innovative methods also in the ordinary courses. Not, of course, the basic ones, the fundamental ones, but the, the most applied ones will uh, uh, be endowed with new contents uh, uh, and active learning features from next academy. I do hope I've answered all the questions. So also if you have questions for uh, the professors, I take the opportunity to thank them for their availability. Will the three credit labs start in the first half of the second semester or in the second one? Well, uh, or, or or will they be spread within the entire semester? We have not yet defined this aspect because we need a feedback uh, mm -hmm. uh, from the dean's office uh, because uh, of the, the, the uh, setup of the time uh, table. Uh, and uh, uh, also we are waiting for uh, uh, the, the, the constraints, uh, uh, if any, uh, due to the COVID situation in, in the second semester. We do hope that in the second semester of next year, 
we won't be we won't have any limitation uh, in, in the physical attendance anyway uh, 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 we uh, we feel that uh, limiting the participation to 20 students per laboratory uh, they uh, uh, will be able uh, to be uh, taught in presence in any case uh, um, but uh, I don't know at present if they will take place in the first uh, half semester in the second one or in the whole semester because uh, uh, the organization uh, is not yet ready for uh, that deadline. So I will inform you in due course. Other questions? So it seems that we have no more questions. So thank you again for attending. Thank you to my colleagues for being available, not only for this presentation, but what's most important for teaching these new courses. And uh, yes, I see that there are no questions. So thank you. Thank you guys and see you soon. Grazie Luigi.